Have you ever looked at a map of Britain and wondered where the centre is? Probably not, but I have. Um, and it's took me on this epic little adventure to find it. So I happened to be looking at a map of Britain one day and as somebody who lives in the northwest of England, I realised that the centre of Britain might not be too far from home. But it's not actually that straightforward an answer. The centre of Britain is a contentious issue with more than one correct answer. It all depends on how you define the centre, how you define Britain and how you calculate it. The first problem is the coastal problem. The coastline of Great Britain is not a set thing. It's constantly changing with the ebb and flow of the tides. And to make matters worse, floods and erosion don't help either. And what about places which are neither land nor sea, like Morecambe Bay behind me, uh, which most of the time is just a trickle of water running through it. And in fact, it's quite navigable by foot. But when the tide comes in, uh, nobody would really class it as part of the island. The second problem is defining what exactly we're looking for. Britain isn't really anything at all, it's a vague term. It may refer to the British Isles, the United Kingdom, everything east of Ireland and south of Shetland, or simply the biggest island of them all, Great Britain. Some people say that the centre is the bit furthest from the sea, which would make it here, a spot just east of Church Flats Farm, about a mile southeast of Coton in the Elms in Derbyshire. While this is quite interesting, it doesn't really say anything about the centre of Britain, it just acknowledges that most of the land is down here in the southeast. The village of Haltwhistle in Northumberland likes to kick up a big fuss about being the actual centre point of Britain, and has spent a lot of time and effort trying to prove it. The method employed here is to join the longest line of latitude north to south, and then the other lines going out. And if you wanted to draw a circle around the British Isles, from its outermost points in Shetland and the southeast coast of Ireland, Hull Whistle more or less falls at the centre. Indeed, this method was occasionally used in ancient times by Romans, Egyptians and so on. And it does show Hull Whistle as the centre of these points, which is fascinating. But it's only one method of calculating the centre and relies a lot on compass points and not very much on actual geography. It's no more or less legitimate than the other methods but it doesn't take into account two important things about the British Isles. One, the unequal distribution of land in the south compared to the north, and two, the remoteness of the Shetland Isles, which skews the centre to the northeast. Now these are problems because the circle used by Hortwhistle shows the mass of land in the southwest, with mostly sea to the northeast. But in reality, when you look at the landmass of the British Isles, the majority of it is in the east. So really, most of what you're finding when you include the Shetland Isles is the centre point of an area which contains a hell of a lot of nothing. If we use a square instead of a circle, we get the same result, but the centre point drifts eastward towards the coast. Okay, so we're probably not going to find an answer that satisfies everybody, but remember, Britain isn't flat. It's three-dimensional with mountains and valleys. It's also a bent plane sitting on the curved surface of the Earth. And according to basic science, the best way to find the center of that is using something called the gravitational method. This is the most accurate way and finds the center without including all of that C. So this calculates the center of gravity and it's a scientific method that's been used from everybody from NASA to Ordnance Survey all the way back to Captain Cook. So imagine the island as a flat plane balancing on the head of a pin. Now wherever you have to put that pin to find balance, that is the center of gravity. Now with my hand, you can see that it's not an equal shape. We've got more mass down here in the south or the bottom than the north where the fingers are. So the center of gravity won't be exactly in the center of my hand. It'll be slightly further down because that is the point where the balance will be found. Now using the gravitational method, the centre of the UK, the country, is out there somewhere in the middle of Morecambe Bay, 2.4 kilometres out exact, um, and it's roughly around there. Now it's kind of what you'd expect, in fact if you look at a map of the UK, your eyeball 
automatically kind of picks out Markham Bay as being at the centre. So the actual centre of Great Britain and all the tiny little islands that surround it is further inland here, seven kilometres northwest of Dunsop Bridge, high up on a hillside in the middle of the forest of Boland. Now my problem here is how am I actually going to find the spot? This is it. This is the centre of Great Britain and all those tiny little islands that surround it. This general point right about here. But what if you just wanted to find the centre of Great Britain? As in the island, the big island, uh, nothing else included. Well, that shifts the centre point further south, still in Lancashire, but a hell of a long hike away. Right, so I'm still in Lancashire, um, just outside of a village called Wally, which is near Burnley, Clitheroe, Accrington, that kind of way. Because um, I believe the next centre point is in the middle of a field, uh, which I'm just going to try and find now. Right, and I think this is it. This is the field behind me. Somewhere out there in that grass is the centre point of Great Britain, the island. Um, but as you can see, it's a field. It's privately owned. It's part of a farm. So, I'm going to have to be a bit sneaky about this, I think. Right, so I've just been up to the farm, uh, which is on the field uh, up there, on the hill up there, um, to ask permission. I thought, why not just knock on the door and say, can I go stand at the centre of your field? Uh, but there's nobody there, there's nobody answering. I had a good look around, um, which is kind of weird because there's always somebody at a farm, isn't there? Uh, anyway, it's one of those things. This fence, look at this fence. This is the, the fence around the actual field I want to go in. I've never seen a fence quite like this around a farmer's field 
Um, I'm, not, I'm sure they've not put it up just to stop people going to the centre of Britain, but um, it's just sod's line. It the one place I'd like to get into has got this really <laughs> uh, tough fence to get around, uh, get over. Um, so yeah. Right, so this is more like it, a barbed wire fence. Um, so yeah, it must be a really precious field this, it's so well defended. It's got to be accurate here. Find the exact right coordinates. Um, without looking too conspicuous. This is it. This unmarked point in the middle of a field in Lancashire is the exact centre point of the island of Great Britain. Amazing. Now as with all calculations of the centre point, the degree of accuracy can only be given to within a few metres. So it could be anywhere within this place where I'm stood right now. Also, the change in shape of the British coastline means that the centre point will keep on wandering over the years. In a, a while it might not even be in this field anymore. But for now, I think today it's safe to say that I've stood at the exact centre point of Britain and uh, it's about as impressive as you'd expect. Centre of Britain, everybody. Welcome. Oh my God, so hot. Oh, we're nearly there yet. <laughs> 